Listen. I've been for 40 years in Africa. Africa. Africa is a, 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 my very favorite con continent. What I have seen God do in Nigeria defies all description. So mighty, so glorious, so fantastic. And when I was a young evangelist there, I was just about 30 or 31 years of age. I was in the northern, what they then called in those days, the northern Transvaal in, of South Africa. I had a crusade there. It was a small crowd. There were only 8,000 people. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not uh, joking here. I, for us, this was small. And it was on an open field, the elephant grass. You know what elephant grass is? It's as tall as an elephant. We had our open space, but then there was no road or nothing. I had to drive my car through that elephant grass to arrive. I just, I just had preached. I just had led a few thousand people to the Lord. We saw mighty miracles of God. I still wanted to be alone a little bit. And I all had gone and I was there. The generator was still running. I switched it off. It was a pitch black night. No star in the sky. No moon, no nothing. I could hardly see where, where my car was. I saw it then and I got in. Switched the lights on and drove away through that high grass. Suddenly, <clears throat> there was a young man in front of me. And he flagged me down. I stopped the car. I pulled the window down. I said to him, I said, is there something wrong? He came and said, no, it's nothing wrong. But I knew you would pass here. I found Jesus as my savior in this crusade. And I knew you would come past here and that I would meet you here because I want to receive the Holy Spirit. I said, what is your name? He said, my name is David. I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 17 years of age. Touched me so much. I got out of the car, let all the lights on that I could see was what I was doing. Laid my hands on him and the moment it was as if lightning struck him. That was electricity. He was bending backwards, forwards and burst out in new tongues and it was absolutely wonderful. Something I had wit witnessed already so often, so often. He said, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm now going to my home village. And I went to my, the home where I, uh, the people, the people with whom I was staying. Now, here's the point. Four weeks later, back at home, I hear people say there is a revival in Northern Transvaal. I say, who's the preacher? <laughs> they said, you will not believe it, but it's just a boy. Mighty miracles are happening through that boy. I say, what's his name? They said his name is David. I was preaching in another area. I was in those, then I already had a trailer. And this time I also had a tent. A 
a tent that could hold 10,000 people. And one afternoon there was a knock on my door. I opened. He said to me, sir, do you remember me? I'm David. I said, yes, I remember you very well. He said, I've come to tell you what happened when I left you that night. He said, early in the morning at the crack of day of dawn, he said, I approached my home village and then I saw a mother, that is a very polite word, uh, courtesy uh, among the Africans there, uh, uh, a mother came towards me and she carried her child and the child was crying, wailing, whimpering. He said, I knew that mother and I knew the week before she had lost her first child to a fever. Now the second child was just as feverish. He said, I saw her. And he said, suddenly, the love of God gripped me. And although by our custom, I could not have spoken with her, I approached her and I said, mother, can I pray for your child? And she said, anything, yes, of course. He said, I prayed for that child. Immediately, the child stopped crying and said, I'm hungry, mom. I'm hungry. That kid was totally healed. The mother was so happy. She ran to the chief and said, chief, you know how I buried my first child. My second was just about to die when David prayed for my child and he is now completely well. The chief said, what? I have a daughter who's very sick. She was born a cripple. I have seen the best doctors in South Africa and nobody was able to help her. Call David to pray for my daughter. He said he was called and went to that uh, 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 chief house. And the chief said to him, there in that hut, in that hut is my daughter. She's never walked. He said, go in that hut and pray for her that you, Jesus, will heal my daughter. He said, I, I, I went into that hut and when my eyes got used to the darkness, I saw the girl. He said, he said she had twisted, twisted legs, completely twisted, like spaghetti, you know. And there she was. He said, I spoke to her about Jesus. I laid hands on her. And when I started to pray, suddenly he said, we heard cracking noises. He said, and suddenly we realized the bones were straightening. He said the chief waited outside and his daughter walked out. He said for the first time in her life she walked and the chief was screaming, everybody was screaming. And the chief said, David, for the next 10 days, you are going to preach here to all my people. 
You know, in Africa, when the chief speaks, you better obey. And people came from all over. He said they came from all over. And I preached every day for 10 days. I said, David, you told me you just got saved in my meeting. What on earth did you preach? <laughs> he said to me, Muruti, I preached every sermon of yours. I said, hallelujah. Then you have preached the gospel. People got saved. Pastors moved in. Baptized those people in water. This is what God can do. Clear the decks. God has something great for you in mind. Open the window. And shoot in Jesus' name. I am so happy to read that the prophet did not say, aim. He didn't say, aim. All he said was, shoot. Why is that? Because the arrows of deliverance of the Lord, they are self-targeting. They are like a cruise missile. They go around so many bends, but they find their point. And when God is in action, you just shoot without aiming. And it is a shot for deliverance and for salvation and for peace and happiness. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then he told them, take some arrows and hit the ground. So the king took a bunch of arrows and hit the ground three times. And then we just read, the man of God was angry. He said, you should have hit the ground five or six times. Then you would have had a complete victory over Syria. But now you will have one victory and then they will come back. What does that mean? It means we have got to be persistent. It means we must not just strike once and then be happy and write a book about it. It means that we have to persist again and again and again. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and to set the captives free. And to open the eyes of the blind. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody once said to me, my preaching was not logical. Oh, I thought that was a compliment. I tell you one thing, the apostles did not rely on logic. They relied on the power of God. Let's rely on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And let's, let's stop make, making excuses. Now, I believe the best is yet now to come. Amen. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. A few years ago, 
I was in Germany speaking at the pastor's conference together with Daniel Kulenda. In the night before I was to preach that evening, I had a, an amazing experience. I don't know whether I was asleep, whether I was awake, or what. But I knew one thing. I was in the spirit. I heard, overheard two voices. Two men speaking to each other. Describing what was happening in Germany. In about 20 years time. And they were saying how the streets of the cities were filled with young people. And how they were raising their hands, thronging through the streets and worshiping Jesus. And preaching the gospel and how the glory of God was shaking the whole nation. I was listening. I think it was a conversation between God the Father and God the Son. And then I heard a question. This was the question. What about Reinhard Bonnke? What became of him? And the answer came back like this. I will never forget it. Oh, Reinhard Bonnke was just the forerunner of a whole new generation of Holy Spirit evangelists. And as such a forerunner, I'm standing here right now. And I pray that you will join me in the run. <laughs> Preach the word of God. Fearlessly. Open the window. And shoot. And strike the ground with persistence. And you will see how God is going to use you. You will be usable when the window is open. And when you shoot that arrow, you are usable in Jesus' name. In Joel chapter 2 verse 28. The Lord says, in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. Listen. Young men shall see visions. They will uh, not just television. <laughs> a vision is when we see as God sees, that is a vision. You will have new eyes. You will see as God sees. Hallelujah. And they shall prophesy. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. That means they will get a new language. Other than English. Or whatever your language, your mother tongue is. You will prophesy. You will position yourself. You will be ready to be used by God. And you will see souls saved in your family, among your friends, 
at your work, at your school, at the university. In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can I still tell you a little story? This is really what happened to me. That was when I was young also, also. I see so many young people here. I, I was a young preacher. I was invited to preach in a church Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I was there. I preached that evening to about 200 people. And I was so surprised. All the people that had come, they were old. Nothing against old people. I'm old myself. But then I was young. I only saw gray heads. And I turned to my friend, Harold. I said, Harold, where are the young people of the city? At the end of the meeting, he said, I'm glad you noticed it. The young people were missing. He said, get into my car. Do you want to know where the young people are? I said, yes, I want to know. He said, get into my car. I'll show you. I got into his car. We drove through the city into the industrial sides and then he stopped and I looked out of the window and I saw a huge building and big flashing lights on the face of that building disco 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 and I heard the music Woo! it was terrible music He said, come out. I show you where the young people are. I said, I've never gone to a disco. I, won't, I, I don't want to come in. I've seen enough. He said, do you want or don't you want to see where the young people are? I said, I want. He said, come out. Got out of the car and walked into the building. Young people everywhere. The Holy Spirit then spoke to me. He said to me, Reinhardt, open the door of the dance hall and look in. Ha! Huh. I opened the door of the dance hall, I looked in, and I saw the young people there dancing like crazy. The music went through my whole system, went on my stomach, and I thought, oh, and I looked again. Suddenly, I saw something. I saw that those boys and girls, those young people, they were dancing. But when I looked on their faces, I saw that they were searching for something the disco couldn't give them. I pulled back, closed the door. I said, Harold, do you know the owner of the disco? He said, yes, I do. I said, take me to him. He said, what? What do you want from him? I said, I want to ask him to allow me to speak five minutes to these young people. Five minutes. He said, Reinhard, you are crazy. I said, what? You brought me here. Where is the owner? He took me to the owner. I said to the owner, I said, sir, 
I've come all the way from Germany. Not that that matters. I just thought, you know, I had to impress him with something. <laughs> I said, I've come all the way from Germany. I would like to just speak to the young people for five minutes. He looked at me. I had just come from church. I looked like a preacher. He said, are you a preacher? I said, yes, I am. He said, go and preach to the people in your church. I said, mister, the young people don't come to church. That's why the preacher comes to the disco. I said, I beg you, give me five minutes. Only five minutes, sir. I said, you're crazy. Get out. Turned and walked away. That moment I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me again. Reinhardt, tell the owner of the disco what you saw when you looked into the dance hall. I quickly turned around. I got him by his arm. I said, sir, just a minute. Can I ask you a question? He said, what is it? I said, do you believe that the young people in your disco find here what they need for their lives? His face changed. He said, that's strange that you say that. Just these last weeks, I was thinking a number of times, the young people don't find here what they need in life. Wow. I said, sir, please. Five minutes. He said, okay. Okay. I give you five minutes. But only five minutes, not tonight, he said. Tomorrow night, sharp midnight, I give you the microphone for five minutes. Oh, I was so happy. I nearly would have hacked him. I was so happy. And then when I walked out to the car, I thought, now how foolish was I? Why did I only ask for five minutes? I said, Lord, forgive me my foolishness. I put that five minute story into his head. Why didn't I ask for more? The Lord didn't say anything. After a while, I started to pray again. I said, Lord, you have created the world in six days. You can save a disco in five minutes. The next day, I first went to church. I preached to the gray heads. I don't know what I preached, but I think it must have been the worst sermon I ever preached because my mind was already in the disco. The moment the meeting was gone, I, I went with her. I went to the place where I was. Uh, where, where I was staying with the people and changed myself to casual, as casual as I, as I could. I didn't want to arrive there as a preacher. And 11.30 that night, I entered that disco. This time, it was jam-packed. I think twice as many. So close, so... Oh, that what we call in Africa, skin contact. You know, that's really tight. I sat there at the bar, waiting for the clock to strike midnight. Don't worry, I just drank a Coca-Cola. <laughs> I always supported the American economy. <laughs> a 
And then the clock struck midnight. I jumped up, Bible in hand, jumped onto the platform, took the microphone out of the hand of the DJ. And I said, sit down. I've come all the way from Germany. I have got something very important to tell you. I talked very fast because I had no time. And then they all sat down and then I realized dance halls have no chairs. They all sat on the floor and I started to preach. And suddenly, whew, the Holy Spirit came in. And I was speaking and preaching. I saw one minute was past. And suddenly, I heard sobbing. I saw people wipe, young people wiping their tears. I saw handkerchiefs and tissues everywhere. And when you see tears, you must know it's time for an altar call. I said, everyone bow their heads. Who of you wants to receive this wonderful Jesus who died for you to save you from sin and to wash you from sin by his precious blood? I tell you, all the hands came up. When five minutes were gone, I was walking out on cloud number nine, <laughs> praising the Lord for this glorious and wonderful miracle. My arrow shot through the window. And yours will hit as well. The best is still to come. A year later, I come back to the city. Harold is waiting for me at the airport with his car. He said, Reiner, get into my car. I have a surprise for you. He drove me through the city. I thought, I knew this part. And then he stopped. I was, he parked right next to that old building where he stood a year before I looked out of the window and I got a shock I could no more see disco disco what I saw on the face of the building was a cross Harold said to me, Reinhardt, this is not the best. Come with me. He opened the door and there were the young people. Do you remember me? I was the drummer. Do you remember me? I worked the lights. That disco went bankrupt that night. And the young people took that building over. Pastors moved in, baptized them in water. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now, I will wrap it up. Listen. After that meeting with the king, Elisha died.
I am 75 years old. I'm no more a spring chicken. But my heart is burning hotter than ever. But I want to assist you to become a runner. If I'm the forerunner, as I heard, then we all need to run together. Because everyone is called to preach the gospel, to be a witness or a preacher or whatever. I've seen from 1987 till now, we in our team have seen 74 million people receive Jesus as their savior. And I know that I know that I know Jesus is here, the Holy Spirit is here, and I am here to give you the baton to start your race in Jesus' name. Take the baton in Jesus' name. Shoot! This is not a wailing wall. We are here rejoicing. You get the button in your hand. And I know you will run faster than I have ever run. God will do greater things through you than I have ever seen him do. Nothing diminishes in God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. America will be saved. America will be saved. will come mightily upon you. You will leave different to the way you came. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. In Jesus' name. Let me tell you, I, would, I wish I had time to speak about the baton I'm, I'm handing to you now. I have no time to do that. But I want to tell you this. I've written a book called Evangelism by Fire. This I've written from my heart. It's how you can be effective in evangelism. Here are the secrets of my life and ministry in this book. If you, this is part of the button. I'm telling you. Amen. Get that book. And uh, the other book is here, Taking Action. It's on the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are not just medals of honor that we wear when we come to church. The gifts of the Spirit are the tools for the job in Jesus' name. And that's how I explain it here. And the disco story I just told you is part here in my autobiography. I tell you, if you read this, it will knock you off your sofa. <laughs> and it will inspire you to do great things for Jesus Christ. 
That's the baton. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. I have been digging out the trumpets that br brought down the walls of Jericho. I cleaned them up and I repaired them. And now I'm blowing faith and the gospel from city to city, from state to state, and from coast to coast in the name of Jesus. And I want to do it together with you. The Holy Spirit is right here, right now. If you want to become a runner with the baton of the gospel, you know, the baton is always the gospel. It comes from generation to generation. But the fire always comes individually. You don't get the fire from another generation. You get it straight from heaven. And if you grab this baton right now, your flame and your baton will meet and you will carry the gospel across this nation and across the world in Jesus name. If you want to do that, then lift your hands, lift your hands. The Holy Spirit is going to fall right now. You know how we do it in Africa. We praise the Lord with one accord. One accord. And I tell the crowd, these huge crowds of sometimes over a million people, I say to them, this is what you need to do. When we worship the Lord with one accord, you we, we pray with one voice. We will shout a hallelujah from earth to heaven, which means praise the Lord. And once you do that, then you attract the Holy Spirit. And as you keep shouting hallelujah, suddenly the Holy Spirit will come and you will be filled. I wished I could lay my hands on you. But the Lord said to me, my hands are not so important. He is here tonight and he will lay his hands on you wherever you are in Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready to praise the Lord with one accord? This is what I will tell This is how we will do it. I will just tell you when to shout your hallelujah. Don't do it right now. Don't do it right now. We do it all together. And don't shout just one hallelujah and then look around. Keep shouting hallelujahs and suddenly you will have a new language to use. And you will start prophesying. Some of you are going to see visions. Some of you get gifts of the spirit of spirit of discernment and gifts of healings and everything is possible. The working of miracles, everything is possible. Are you ready? Then close your eyes now, lift your hands to heaven and now shout your hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 fire fall, fire fall, fire fall, Kashabarabo. Shoot! Hallelujah! 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 
Lord, we got the burning baton. The window is open. The arrow is flying. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance for America. And for anybody present here, all sickness is broken. All depression is gone forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise him. 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 Let's praise him.